Doodle butt. I got something new to put in my five pen case. A beautiful Italian pen. Of course, I don't speak any Italian, so let me butcher some of these words. So this is made by Leonardo Officina Italiana. Within this box, there is a Stilografica Lavorata, the Barapena, which has a large 1.5 milliliter of ink capacity, hence the Pistona Grande. And of course, it's made in Italy. So fatto a mano in Italia. Mosaico. Okay, I promise no more terrible Italian. We have a Leonardo pen. Comes in this beautiful sleeve, the Mosaico. Reveal that with a box. Now, one thing I noticed, you know, it's got the sticker on here, but it's got no other uh, information on here. I thought they would put something on top so you know which way it's up or down because the sides are equal. So you could open it this way. You might think it's up, but that's actually upside down. So anyways, one little comment. They should put something on top so you know the way up. Here we go. You got the manual. You got the pen and a cool little bottle of ink. So this is a brand new edition in the Mazeo collection. The spelling now, it's B-A-O-B-A-B. -B -B. Now I think in North America we'd say Baobab, but I think in the Italian it'd be like Baobab, something like that. Anyways, again, I, I promised I wouldn't do any more Italian, so I gotta keep my promise here. But this was sent to me by the good folks over there at Gold Spot, Gold Spot pens, check them out. Uh, there's also a, a Doodle Bud code on there. That one doesn't save you anything. Okay, it does support the channel a little bit, so uh, check them out. But this is a stunner. Like, just I took this out of the box right away and went, oh, another beautiful Italian pen. We'll take this off, the little little dog tag here, whatever it is. Now, let me show you really quick in the instructions. It gives you some details of all that stuff. But there's a cool little picture here. Let me just show you this. That looks like someone who loves making fountain pens. On a lathe, having fun making a pen to care about what they do. So that gives you an idea of what's what's behind the workings of these types of pens. Um, they give all sorts of details. They tell you if it's a steel nib. I have a steel nib. It's an ABS feed. Gold nibs have ebonite feeds. Um, give you some details about how things are put together. This is actually kind of handy. So if you need to take it apart, the nib housing, uh, it's glued inside the section. Okay. And so therefore the feed and the nib are friction fit. So that's actually really nice to, to mention that to you. Sometimes you don't know. When you go to take out the feed, if you got to service it and clean it, do you unscrew it or pull it? So they tell you right there, it's, you do a friction fit. And then also, um, this is a piston filler, and you can disassemble it with the wrench. So some useful information that sometimes is, uh, is missed, but thank you for that. Let's put that out of the way and focus on the main thing here, the pen. Now, I'm going to do some glam shots in a minute. But let me just show you some of the details I noticed already. So obviously, we got all these beautiful colors in here. And uh, so it's a mosaic. So it's like a mosaic. Obviously, a bunch of different pieces are put together to make these uh, these rods here. Whoa, there we go, focus. And so you can appreciate all the time and effort that goes into something like that. But let me just show you something here. Okay, this is a fine little detail. This is, you know, when people think about what they're doing. The guy in the lay there, he cares. So you can see all the different layers. They run horizontal. It's also perfectly horizontal with the clip. That little detail, right? Because the clip could be over here, but they made it so everything is in alignment. Nice little detail. So, let's get into it. The pen is listed currently on Gold Spot Pens for $220. With that, it comes a beautiful box, as I showed you. It comes with a bottle of ink. What do we got? 40 milliliters. So that's, you know, that's an extra value. I forget what those go for. Maybe $20, $25, something like that. So that's not so bad. You get quite a large pen. I'm going to show this in a moment, but it, uh, I'll put my mount below 149 as a comparison just to give you an idea. It's a piston filler. A lot of uh, detail work in this pen, like the, the cap band here, just all the craftsmanship, all the workmanship here that's going into it. Assembly, everything is absolutely spot on. I found one tiny little, little, little thing. I'll show you that. It doesn't impact it, but just sort of a recommendation as a final detail. It fits quite nice in your hand. Like I have a big hand. I don't need to post this pen. It fits really well. So if you like large pens, this is one for you. Sorry about the tripod bumping. It posts as well, nice and secure. Makes the pen quite large, but doesn't backweight it. So that's a nice detail. And yeah, 
it's just one of these pens every time you take it out you're just like oh that's that's nice you enjoy it you enjoy taking the pen out it's got one turn to uncap which is always a nice detail one turn oh one and a touch one and eight let's say and there you go um just yeah alignment of everything so you have the clip here exactly 180 degrees out i was checking here on the back side lining everything up you have the engraving on the back here this is done via laser let me get you a close-up this at least looks to me like that's done through a laser but it's very very clean very good job i reviewed a delta pen the other day that was good but it was off a bit the laser needs to be dialed in a touch better this one leonardo they got their laser just on point really good clean job there while we got this on here let's just have a look at the cap band like that is just stellar absolutely flawless great job there you can just see there's no like even the gaps there's like no gaps everything is perfectly together the resin on the pen here as well as you go along and look at it all the little tiny seams it's it's tough to do this with the camera here but you know i just appreciate stuff like this like fantastic build quality and assembly one thing you can't help notice now i don't have a ton of italian pens but on here there's a bunch of italian pens and two german pens care to guess which one are the german pens you guessed it here are the two german pens they're very expensive high end but just let's look at how the italians do it here i mean we got vintage we got new and even like a black pen stands out and looks amazing so the first pen you see here is a leonardo memento zero regular size that's not the grande but then we have the mont blanc 149 the new leonardo mosaico then we have a visconti homo sapien bronze age and then my dolce vita made by marta modena and here we are back again with the caps off so you can see size wise it is the largest of the bunch as I showed, it's a fairly large pen. Overall, like this, it measures 153 millimeters. Take off the cap, you're left with 135 and a half. If you post it, it posts nice and securely. It's quite long now, about 172 millimeters. Far as diameter, uh, kind of the thickest part of the cap here, about 16 and a half millimeters. The body, thickest part right around here, about 15 and a half. The grip section goes from about 13.2, tapers down to about 12 millimeters. And it's quite a long section, about 28 millimeters long. Overall, the pen weighs with a full load of ink pretty much here that I got in it is 32.4 grams. Just to compare that with the 149, as you saw, it's a little bit smaller. The diameters are all pretty much the same. The, the difference with the 149, the section doesn't taper as much as the Leonardo. And uh, the 149 is about two grams or so less. The moment the pen arrived, I inked it up, wrote with it, and I've been carrying it with me ever since. It's been performing great. There is a little thing that has come up with the nib, and this is what I talked about at the start of the video. So this is fitted with their elastic nib. Now, when I first see that, I think, oh, it's like a flex nib, so you're not quite sure. And so I've tried putting some flex onto it. It's not overly flexed, uh, flexy, I should say. I guess the, the term elastic means it just maybe has a bit of a bounce to it. So what has happened, and I, again, I don't know if it came like this from the factory or if it was for me maybe uh, pushing too hard, but I'll get you a close-up of the nib here and you'll see what I mean. I think we got a shot here so you can see the slit. The two sides of the tipping are not parallel. They splay out at the bottom so that's what's called canyoning and again i don't know if that came from the factory or from me messing around with this nib pushing it harder than i should which i think it was me but that's what's going on what i'm going to do for the writing sample is write with the pen as it is now and as i was preparing i'm actually pretty much 100 percent sure the pen was not like that when i first got it when i first got it, i inked it up i was so excited put it on the page and it wrote just beautifully i was like oh wow that feels fantastic then I noticed it was this elastic nib and I tried to push it to see what it could do and I've caused that problem. So I'll write with it now so you can see what happens and what the issue that creeps up from it. Um, but I'll also show you how to fix it, but I'll also show you what not to do so you don't run into the same problem. So here we go.
So you could see the odd little skip happening. And that's because of what's called that canyoning. So it looks something like this. But as you saw with my tip now, it's off. It's like this now. Okay. And if you look closely on the video when I did it, I'll try to maybe put it up on screen. What happens is the ink isn't here at the bottom, right? This is the page. If you look on there, the ink was actually up here, right? And I'm exaggerating how, how wide that is. What happens is when you have your slit, now if you watch that video I did with Josh Lash, Lax, he explains all this stuff, but the slit goes from here to there and it, it narrows just a little bit because you want to have a channel for the ink. You want to direct it where to flow. Well, if you get to the end and your channel is narrower at the top, it's going to go to the top. So the ink won't be right there, ready to go, which will cause a bit of a hard start. That sort of happens with baby's bottom. This, this one doesn't have that, but you can have it where it's over polished right here. And so the ink won't, won't be there at the bottom, ready to go. So it's sort of the, the same type of characteristic, but it's caused by something else. So how that something else happened was I was writing with it. It was beautifully smooth. It has this nice, like kind of light little bounce to it, which was quite satisfying and rewarding. But then I wanted to see, well, how elastic is this? So then you start applying pressure and you do this. You're like, oh, okay. It's got a little bit of bounce, a little bit of flex to it. You just want to see what it's really made of. And I start testing it. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is the problem. So that lets me know that is me doing it. The feed can keep up no problem. But what I'm doing is uh, I think I'm putting those tines too far apart. And just the way this one deflects, it, uh, it does this to the tipping material. Well, not to the tipping material, but to the nib. And that's what happens to the tipping material geometry when it's, it's, once it's there. So don't do that to your nib. Uh, it's not a flex nib. I guess they would call it a flex nib if it was a flex nib. It just has this nice rewarding little bounce to it um, that if you put a little accent, but if you push to see maximum, I don't think it likes it. The other thing that does to the nib is because it's wider here at the bottom, is if, it, if they were parallel like this, this is like a fine elastic nib. You have a fine point, but because they're further apart now, and I'm really exaggerating it, when the ink does get down there, it will flow to there. It writes, the line width does write a little bit wider. And I noticed that shortly after, like I started pressing on it within a few strokes. I noticed I'm like, oh, this writes a little bit wide for this fine nib, but that's because of Either I th I'm pretty sure what's going on is, is from me. There might have been a little bit of that from the factory, but I guarantee I've made that way worse if there was. Now, if your pen is like that out of the box, contact whichever retailer you get it from, like Gold Spot or directly from Leonardo, wherever you buy it. I'm, I'm fairly confident someone will take care of you. I've had the odd nib uh, have an issue and it's been taken care of. But again, I'm pretty sure I did this. So if you do this too, let's show you how to fix this. Now in the manual, it said friction fit because they glued the housing in. So you're just going to grab this, give it a little rock here, and we'll pull out the nib and the feed. I did leave this inked, so I'm going to be a little bit careful, but there we go. Now I'm going to wash this off so I don't, my hands don't get crazy dirty. So the nib is all cleaned up so I can show you. Let's look at what's going on. If this is the end of the tipping and the gap between my fists here is the slit, it should be like that. This will be the page, right? They're not parallel. They're like this. So how do you bring them back in? Well, you got to kind of bend them down so they're like that how you do that. I'm going to show you as best I can. I'll put the uh, magnifying glass there on the, on the lens. I'll show you my work. But what I'm going to do is essentially, if we can get some type of focus, is squeeze the shoulders in, right? Squeeze the shoulders in a little bit. Do a little bit of work like that. Squeeze them together. I'll check under my loop and then I'll fill you in with a microscope attachment on the camera. And so now we'll bring them from here to here. Now there's a good chance they'll end up too tight together. So then we'll just have to separate them just a little bit so we can get that ink flow channel running the way it should. So this was after about, I don't know, maybe 60 seconds of just squeezing those shoulders were a lot better. We still got a touch more to do at the bottom. It almost looks like the slit is just off center on the nib on this one, but you can see we're much, much closer now. I'll give that a final adjustment. I'll put it back in the pen, then we'll write. I thought I would just include this for those of you who haven't pulled out a nib before uh, and are maybe a little bit nervous to do so. You can see here it, it is kind of keyed. There's a flat here on the bottom and then you have that little ledge on either side. So what that means is the bottom of the feed goes here and that's the shoulders of the nib goes there. 
So what you do is you line your nib and your feet, get the slit lined up here. You put the flat on the bottom with the flat on the bottom. And you just, just slide it in there. A little bit of pressure. There we go. We're seated all the way. And I'll double check it to make sure everything else is lined up. There we go. That's pretty close. I'll check it under the loop one last time in case the alignment's changed. But that's how you slip it in there. So here is where we are. The pen is all back together. The nib's in there. It's been adjusted and tuned. And the hard starting, skipping, all that stuff is now gone. Uh, yeah, just a lovely writer. Can't say that about my writing tonight. Man, I don't know why it's so bad. But anyways, yeah, fast stroke, printing, all that stuff. I would say this is now a fine point nib. The flow is good. And uh, yeah, it's exactly where it should be. So... I don't, maybe there was a little bit from the factory. I saw the slit is off center a touch, but I think for me pushing on this nib a little too hard is what caused it. Um, I'm going to chalk up that nib thing as something that Doodlebud did to the pen unknowingly, just through a little too, uh, too much excitement. Looking at the piston knob, about the only thing I haven't shown you. So it looks to me like there is a metal sleeve inside of the knob here in the back. And that's interacting with the threads here on it. It almost looks like that's a little bit of grease that they have in there as well to keep things running nice and smooth because the piston motion is very smooth. I don't feel any binding up here with the resin that they're doing on with the parts of the piston. So that feels good. And you can see there it accepts a, uh, you know, a Leonardo tool they have to remove the piston. But yeah, oh, there you go. You can see a little bit of that grease down on that notch down there. So everything is nice and lubricated. The only negative, I guess, when it comes to a piston filler is it doesn't have the ink window. I think they could probably sort it out so it would look good with the overall build of the pen and the, the appearance and all that sort of stuff and maybe fit it in. Maybe it wouldn't look good, but just thought I would point it out. Again, the piston is quite smooth. There are some piston filling pens you get where you turn the knob and as you do it, you, it feels like there's just, you're putting too much force and there's like a little back pressure and things are turning and you're always like, oh gosh, I, I hope nothing snaps. This is not one of those at all. This is actually, this is very, very smooth mechanism. One of the best piston fillers I felt. My final thoughts, I really like the pen. I mean, it is built exceptionally well. All the parts fit together. Everything's great. The, uh, the job here in the cap band, the feel of it. Now you might not like a big pen, so this might be too big for you. That's fine. Um, but it's very, very comfortable. The nib thing, like I said, I'll chalk that up to a doodle butt error. Um, Piston filler's great. The engraving on here is, is spot on. They got that laser dialed in. Everything's just really good. And it just looks beautiful. Again, I think it looks beautiful. You might not like it at all. But um, the only tiny, tiny little thing I would recommend on here, so everything is all smooth, like these get machined and they get, uh, they get polished, is on here on the very edge of the cap band. Now, it's not sharp but it is a fairly square edge. If I look underneath with a magnifying glass, my loop there, there's not really a radius on it. You can feel a little bit of an edge, okay? Now, it doesn't impact anything, but one thing that happens if you have essentially square edges, if you were to you know, drop the cap or bump it, you are more prone to having a little chip there. Now, you don't need to like program in a radius really when you're doing the machining, even if just during the buffing that they're doing where this is going and getting buffed, if this was just touched just a hair, it would break that edge. It would round it, just put a tiny micro uh, radius on there. And that would just avoid if you drop the pen cap or something. Now, again, if you drop something, you don't, you know, be surprised if something chips. But that would just reduce the likelihood of having just a tiny little chip happen on there if that was rounded during the polishing process. So thanks goes out to Goldspot for sending me this lovely Leonardo pen for review. Not only is it a sharp looking Italian pen, it is very well made and functions great. I think overall the packaging, they've done a good job. They include the ink so you're ready to go. Gorgeous looking pen and very comfortable to use. Love to hear from you down there in the bottom. Have you had any Leonardo pens? Or if you do, what's your favorite one? If there's one on your list, let me know what one you're looking at. Um, they are definitely easy on the eyes. We'll leave it there for now. Got lots of other reviews coming up and fun projects. Catch you next time.